my husband. <laughs> okay. And, uh, my presentation as well, Steph. I don't know if you. I'm just going to. That will be under. Um, yeah, we have a presentation to go under. 5.1. Your staff. Okay, if that's everything, then can I have someone um, move that the PTGAC approve the agenda for this meeting? Ben and seconded. Jeremy, thank you. All in favor? Great, thank you. We do have quorum, right? With, without staff members? Okay, great. Uh, number two, adoption of the minutes. Um, has anyone noted any errors or omissions or needs for clarification? No? Okay, can someone move that we adopt the minutes from January 18th? Rob, thank you. Phil seconded. All in favor? Thank you. Uh, we have no one here to make public comments. Is that correct, Steph? Okay. So we're on to number four. Uh, there is a council referral. Um, I'll read it out. Area one of CD18, Arbutus Ridge, RZO3 2020, land use bylaw number 57. We're going to uh, skip that one. Oh, okay. So, uh, are we going on to five? Okay. Oh, yes, that's Daniel's. Okay, so five. Business arising from the minutes. Uh, welcome, Sue Ellen. Uh, minutes, uh, business arising from the minutes. 5.1, Quarry and Headwaters Park improvements, um, uh, benefiting from the Maggie Cummings project. And Carla, can you fill us in on that, please? Hmm. Thanks, Claudia. Um, <clears throat> so I prepared a short presentation for you. Um, we've got some drafts back. Um, the person who's designing the interpretive signage for us. So we have uh, drafts of two of the interpretive signs and we just want to show them to you and get your comments. And, um, uh, and I'll show you where I'm at with the other interpretive signs as well. So I'll just share my screen here. Are we good? Can you see it? Mm -hmm. Great. Okay, so um, oh, what's going on? There we go. Um, so we have the two drafts that are uh, pond life and bog life. Those are the, the ones that we've, um, we've received the drafts of. They're the uh, rail mounted signage. Um, so one in headwaters and one in quarry. Um, and then we are still working on the um, more historical interpretive sign, which has yet, uh, the location is yet to be determined, as well as the forest succession sign. And we don't know where that one will go either. So that's one thing that I'll be asking you guys tonight is uh, if you have any suggested locations for those two. Um, and then he's also working on the maps. I've collected some extra data for those, just um, points of interest that weren't on our map already and then uh, we were missing just a couple of trails so I've collected that data and then he's um, getting ready to complete those. So this is the first draft, Life in the Bog. Um, I might just give you guys a couple of minutes to look it over um, and we can always, um, at the end of this, we can go back to it if you wanted to um, have it up while you um, comment on it. And we are aware that healthy bog is repeated on the um, bottom picture. We, yeah, as well. Uh, thanks. Did you say we could comment now or did you want to hold the comments? Either way. Okay. I'm just uh, wondering if you might want to say something about how um, a bog has an acid environment and uh, just because it's a special feature of the water in, in the bog and it's why the insects, it, it, 
it's sort of behind, it answers the question, why are these insect eating plants there? And, uh, and that's the role of the sphagnum. And my question is about, uh, my second <coughs> point is about um, um, skunk cabbage. I don't think of it as a, as a bog plant. And I'm just uh, um, w wondering maybe others in the committee have, uh, have a sense of that. I'm, I see it in various wetlands and rarely, uh, I'm rarely in bogs, but. Um, it, yeah, I can jump in on that because, um, I mean, it does occur in the bog at um, Headwaters, but it is not a plant that would be considered characteristic of a bog. It's more a plant that indicates um, uh, rich organic soils. So it wouldn't be one to highlight. It's not that it's incorrect that it will never be found there, but uh, there are better choices. Um, and like the, the other um, plants that are highlighted here are, are great choices. Um, so I would look at um, replacing that um, or maybe bringing one of the middle ones uh, like Labrador tea, um, larger on the right and something else smaller in the middle um, or the sundew because uh, you've kind of uh, focused on with the, the leading line that, uh, that some of the plants will eat insects. So that might be a good one to highlight if you have a, a vertical image that would work there. Um, I, I do agree. Uh, yeah, don't mean to be too critical, but that the acidity of a bog is is uh, is very uh, a defining characteristic of even what plants can grow there, um, and they have to be acid tolerant, um, and that's why sphagnum does so well there, and lots of other species can't grow there. Um, and just while I thinking of it, uh, the very bottom uh, under the sphagnum picture, the last line says component of a healthy bog, healthy bog. So it's just a typo there. Anybody else? Or do you have a suggestion actually for another plant? I'm just trying to think of what's what yeah. I see there. And those are, those are the plants that I see. Um, from where the sign will be mounted? Right. Um, I think there's black spruce in there, isn't there? Um, that would be a, kind of a neat one because that's not a species that you see elsewhere on Bowen. Sue Ellen? Yeah, I think um, <clears throat> I like those ideas. I, I don't think there's black spruce there, but there is shore pine and white pine. The two, like it's a very... It's one of the only areas in the island where you see the western white pine and uh, and shore pine. So whatever you see from that might be those big white pine cones are very distinctive. And yeah. uh, that's a possibility, but it's also not a bog plant, really. My suggestion would be to um, highlight the sphagnum, because when you look out across the bog from the boardwalk, it's the colors of the sphagnum, the different colors and the hillocks that you see. And, the, and it's the sphagnum uh, that captures the carbon and, and creates the pickle juice that preserves everything. And, uh, and that is the reason why the um, sundew has to catch bugs because there's so few nutrients there. Anyway, it's the, the sphagnum is kind of the uh, mm -hmm. queen of the bog. And um, that's my view. Anyway, there's a few ideas for you. A different yeah. color, some of the sphagnum that you oh. can see from the boardwalk is red and colorful and mm -hmm. uh, yeah. it, it might bring out some of the other um, colors because the sundews and the bog cranberries all very, everything's very tiny, I know. And maybe that's a feature. Thank you. Thanks. Um, Carla, I know you probably wanted to just get uh, everything nailed down tonight, but um, I know, and I've said I'd help you in the past with this and uh, haven't uh, contributed yet, but, um, you know, if you want to talk tomorrow, um, we can okay. do that, and yeah. Oh, I'll just give you a call. Yeah. If that works. <laughs> okay, sounds good. Um, did anybody else want to comment just on this one, and or should we just move on? Ben? 
I just want to say that it looks great. It's and it's it's Thanks. a darn shame that that skunk cabbage has to go because it looks brilliant. It, yeah, <laughs> for sure. For yeah. sure. I think the designer is thinking about the design more than the appropriateness of the plants for sure. But um, I also really like the idea of highlighting the sundew because it's just my favorite. So. <laughs> yeah, it does look lovely. It is a good layout. Good. Um, and then so we have our, our pond one here. Um, and what did I want to say? So Bonnie and I already did a little bit of editing and, and we switched. She had um, a bald eagle on the side and we switched to a red tailed hawk because we thought it would be striking and we'd uh, more likely to see those in um, Quarry Park. <clears throat> um, sorry, Carla, just one more note to make that uh, um, while plants are not capitalized, their, their names, um, the uh, birds like the red-tailed hawk you have capitalized um, and just but like red-legged frog uh, the f in frog should be capitalized and I um, on the last page there was something oh the red ring blackbird should be capital R and and capital B and then red-legged frogs gets mentioned again under the mallard okay And they get, they all get capitalized. Yeah. I, I would have said that they don't. Anyways, okay. Uh, Sue Ellen? Uh, thank you. Yeah, a couple of comments. Number one, uh, I think the idea of uh, standardizing how you treat the common names is a good one. Personally, I don't, I, well, I'll send you an article tomorrow, Carla, and you can have a look at it um, uh, one way or the other. <laughs> but, um, uh, uh, my suggestion is what I've seen mostly, can I ask uh, where exactly you're going to put this one? Because I, I like the signs to show what or to explain what the visitor in his senses can perceive. That's the classic line. Mm -hmm. um, so it's meant to be rail mounted. So along one of the two bridges, um, I kind of scoped out which one I thought was better, but haven't made a final decision. Okay. Uh, at the end of my presentation, I actually have the question, where should we put them? And uh, was going to ask everyone if they wanted to maybe do a walkabout. Oh, okay. Great. Because stalling uh, on that for two years because of COVID, but it's maybe, maybe it's time. Maybe we're allowed now, right? So I'm... Mm -hmm. I'm okay, because I'll just, uh, I'll chime in. Um, the uh, second pond uh, in particular, um, the, the one that's back against the Crown land, Mm -hmm. is rife with newts, red, red, uh, red skin newts, or rough skin newts, sorry. And um, so my suggestion would be to put that in instead of northern salamanders. Sometimes you can go there in the summer and you can see 20 at a time, just looking at the water. And uh, secondly, the um, uh, golden eye are not common in, um, uh, in those ponds. They're fish eaters, right? And there's hardly any fish if any my suggestion would be to um uh i'm also really surprised to see that mallard eating a uh a red-legged frog not weird yeah that's a, uncommon you know i, I don't know, see her i red wonder legs, if you want to put an uncommon thing there mostly they eat plants but um, and insects so but my suggestion for the uh, golden eye would be to replace it with insects because the water there, if you get down, uh, you can actually see the water bugs moving and coming up to the surface. That's my suggestion. Um, a specific bug? Um, well, it's interesting because it used to be, uh, I mean, it's gone through all these succession stages right now. So you, what you might want to do is put a back swimmer in there uh, because they have very distinctive shape, right? With the two big arms and they row the water. And um, at the beginning, it was all water boatmen and hardly anything else. And, and more and more diversities come in. But the back swimmer um, is one that's there now. And it's so distinctive, you can even see it from up on a bridge or something. Uh, and if they go around the bottom, that, that would be my suggestion. Uh, so also, I'm, I'm concerned about that mallard eating the frog. That's very unusual. And I, yeah, I it might okay. give the wrong impression. Yes, yeah, Sue Ellen, I was very, very 
I was like, what? Like that's, yeah. And it's not a red-legged frog. It's no. a different species of frog. So, yeah. 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 Um, so I want to ask though, um, Goldeneye, so there's, there is a bird, uh, <laughs> there is a, sw- a swimming bird in there at the pond, in the middle pond. And it's been there every single time I've been there. And I keep failing to bring my glasses and I can't see well enough. <laughs> Well, I can't, I can't tell is. you now, I can't tell you now, but it's, if anything, it's a buffle head. Um, <clears throat> probably if it's small, a big patch of white on the head, um, yeah. that might be one uh, that would give you more uh, variety. But honestly, for kids and families, uh, it's insects mostly that you see. Otherwise, you see birds at a distance like you're seeing them and you're going, I don't know exactly what it is. <laughs> so mm-hmm. anyway, it's, it's more of well, a... That's kind of why I like putting it on there because you can see him in the distance, but you can't tell what he is. So then we tell you what it is. You know what I mean? But um, anyways, uh, if we're going to switch the mallard out, well, then we have a room for a bug and then we could switch the golden eye to a bucklehead. Sure. Yeah. Or you could use another mallard photo. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We could do that. Too. But, yeah. but it would need different text. Um, I'm just... Uh, that one just seems off to me. They they mostly don't eat frogs. Yeah, so you could just take that part out. Um, again, the layout looks lovely. I, those two circles with the invertebrates and the duckweed, I would go uh, larger with them, like uh, fill more of that space with the images so they're not too tiny when you're, like how, how big is this board if it's attached to the railing? I don't remember offhand, um, but it's quite like it's quite large. It's I want to say thirty six, like no three and, feet across. Yeah, does that ring a bell, Bonnie? You think <laughs> I can't? Yeah, about a meter. Yeah, yeah. So they're quite large. <laughs> Can I ask something else? Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Um, just that the uh, pond life that's there in the um, in the little image. I can't see it very well, but uh, those look like stream creatures, and uh, I I don't see any of the familiar kind of uh, pond kinds of things that you would see there. So maybe ask the question: Can this be? Uh, also, there's a spelling error in the word invertebrate. Oh yeah. Instead of the I in the middle, it should be an E. Um, Sue Ellen, do you think you could ask Will if he has a suggestion or even a photo of more pond-like uh, invertebrates? He has tons of photos. Yeah, and sure. uh, <clears throat> I think, um, uh, I, I sure, I'll, t- I'll talk to him and uh, get him to call you, Carla, maybe tomorrow. That'd be great, thanks. Okay, are we good with this one? Okay. Um, so I worked on a little bit of, um, a little bit more for this sign. Um, Swellen probably is the one who should read this one. Um, you know, it's not perfect yet or anything, but I, I picked out some of the pictures from your presentation, well, and I will ask you for some high res or, you know, better copies of these. Um, I think the ones I have aren't bad, but it's from a PDF. So I don't know, maybe they could be better. And just did some rough wording. I watched your presentation, um, which funny enough, I guess I wasn't at the Parks and Trails meeting. So I didn't realize that you had given that presentation and gave me all the information before because I was emailing you asking you about it. And then I, I was confused too. already had it. So, um, but yeah. Let me know what you think, if you have anything to add. Um, well, all of these photos are from Quarry Park. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and um, uh, and that help to good. build. Well, yeah, let me work on the, Can I call you tomorrow about this? I'll, I'll sure. try and grab a screen sure. grab here. And um, I could even send this out. Um, I mean, or I don't know, stuff if you want to. I can send you the presentation, Snowan, mm-hmm. or everybody. It'll be on the revised agenda as well. 
That would be great. Then I can talk to Will too. Oh, is is, well, but this is exciting, and uh, uh, you know, I'm I'm uh, I'm really pleased to see this. I hope I don't come across as too critical. This is the kind of stuff I have done for most of my career. So excuse me for being all in there. <laughs> Sue Ellen, you know what? like this is exactly why we're bringing it forward to the parks and trails because we know there's such expertise okay. on the pan on the committee so it's awesome this is so great yeah I I, I want this yes <laughs> please okay. I want them to be really good you know and um and I know that it's not necessarily my area of expertise so I would I would really appreciate the feedback for sure um, so, but I, I will say just for this one, that was kind of a question was, do we want to do um, a history of both of the parks or one of the parks? Because there is a lot more to say. Um, and I didn't find as much information on Headwaters. I think if we do, um, if we do mostly just the pictures from Quarry, then probably that will dictate that we have to put the sign in Quarry Park <laughs> is, is another point um but yeah I don't think we want too many words on it either like I don't think we want like a big long history lesson it's just more of some tidbits and some appreciation for everyone who built it yes Simone. I, I think you're on the right track here Carla I think I, I like the idea of the story of this park because like yeah. I said before it's what you're what you with your senses perceive the place that you're in the, in touch with that place and uh, anyway one little story is the example for how uh, Bowen Islanders got involved to uh, um, design and uh, help this plant help, help this um, uh, former quarry uh, it wasn't really a quarry yeah I'll have to work on the text but anyway this former mud pit, uh, turn into uh, with the park that you've got today. Anyway, it's about sort of empowering people to do stewardship and I'll look at the text for you, but I think you're on the right track. And just for one park, um, I think agree because I don't have as many, nobody has as many photos of the other ones. Yeah, Perfect. I really like, I really like what you just said, Sue Ellen, is just really about the power or the, you know, just the collaborative wonderful restoration work that can be done and the vision and bringing that to life with hard work. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's a really nice thing. It's very positive. Everybody yeah. pitching in and there will be, yeah. you know, it, it sets people up to help with other parks. So I'll, I'll, I'll have a look at the text tomorrow. Thanks. Oh, before you continue, Carla, may I just yes. um, let everyone know that when um, there's being a screen shared, I can't see everyone. So you may have your hand up and I, I don't even know it. So please um, say something if you'd like to uh, make a comment. Um, okay, so I just left this slide in. It's from my previous presentation. I haven't done any more work on this one. Um, or change the pictures like we had talked about. So it's still here. <laughs> I don't know if there's if anyone had any other comments about this one. Um, I mean, I'm happy to hear them, but like I said, we haven't gotten any further on this one. So maybe this. I'll I'll just uh, chime in. Maybe mm -hmm. this is the one where we talk about restoration and the stages and. Um, yeah, I'll have I'll have suggestions. I think it's more about uh, 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 resilience and nature returning, and uh, uh, and how the um, uh, I don't know if it's ever going to look like that. Anyway, let let me let me have a think. Hmm. Sorry, this is the first time I've seen these drafts, and I've got way too much to say. I'm gonna I'm gonna shut up now. <laughs> You can CC me too if you want, Carla, on the four succession one. Okay. Help with that. Thanks. Um, yeah, well, we know the four succession one too. It, I might just kind of let him, um, let the um, consultant do work on it. And then it, once we have a draft, it might be easier to make comments then. Um, but yeah, anything that we can give him is helpful, I'm sure. So, um, I put these in just 
because I happened to come across them today. And, um, and I was just thinking what I wanted to ask in particular was um, what should we call the whale rock is, I guess this is a Suellen question. What it, um, cause I wanted to add that to the map. Um, and the other question was just if there was anything that um, needed adding to this map or um, omitting. I Sue Ellen, you had your hand up. Yeah, thank you. Um, uh, the uh, designer, uh, Josephine Riley, called it the whimsical whale. So whimsical whale. I think that gives it a, a sense of uh, um, playful, uh, come over and see what it's all about and anything goes kind of um, thing. But uh, we can discuss it on a walkabout too. It doesn't have to be that. And uh, I also wonder if the um, the stone garden uh, usually is called the stone circle. And uh, I know this is Will's map <laughs> here and it's got a spelling mistake and waterfall, that kind of stuff, but <clears throat> um, there's probably more things. And if we have a walkabout, we can uh, uh, look at it, like what would invite people to go and explore. It just, I was up there just last week and where the whimsical whale is, it's actually turned into more like around it, the stone garden. Like there's just such great little inukshuks, little, oh, it's amazing. It's, it's People really are amazing. There. Yeah, yeah that's right. like stacking the rocks and there's a little kind of neat uh, fort that someone's built there. And, oh, it's really fun. We could call it whimsical whale play area or something like that to invite families that they can because most um, places that are parks you're not supposed to you know move everything or but that <clears throat> is a is a play area and the <clears throat> yeah if we do a walkabout I can I'd be happy to uh, okay I can show you the silt pond you know there's a whole bunch of of things that have stories behind them, but I don't know if they belong. Is this sort of a, uh, a wayfinding map or did you want to um, use it as a way to get people into it? Um, either way, I mean, uh, kind of both, I guess. It's um, it's for the kiosk uh, right at the parking area. So I think people will use it how they want to use it, right? <laughs> um, and I was going to say too that uh, I, I agree we could call it some sort of a play area. We're going to put seating there as well. So we'll have a bench and we have that cool um, dolphin tail seat as well. So I think it's going to become a little bit more of a destination <laughs> within the park. So one uh, last thing I'll just leave you with is it is that the trails that go off the map into Crown Land. Um, I think at this point we can put some uh, like the, the one on the other side of the um, the one right in the middle there, we could say two fairy fin. And uh, I can show people where the, uh, like the one that goes up, the black, it's in black on this map. It is a, it is a, a walking route, right? Pedestrian access. Um, <clears throat> and uh, like, I think we could take out the word only now because there is that gate at the bottom for cars. And um, there, but then, the trail is not undeveloped anymore, right? It goes all the way up to the lookout. And I think we could, <laughs> we could put that island lookout or whatever you want to call it up there. Yeah. Um, and then the trail continues on from there now uh, down into the crown land. So several of those trails, we could sort of invite people down into the crown. We didn't used to be able to do that. And, uh, but I think we might be able to now, and maybe that's something um, we can discuss. I know there's that really nice circle from the whimsical whale up and then up into the crown and then up the hillside to the, the lookout and then down our pedestrian access down View Royal. So it's just a really nice circle. It's kind the of adds, yeah, it's a nice route. It's a loop and people don't see the loops. And the other one is if we extend this map to make it a little deeper, you can put the loop from, see the red trail that comes, um, I'm showing with my mouse, of course you can't see that, from the red trail right in the middle of the map, uh, down and then around, it connects up to the road right away, which is 
from Thompson Road, that's all a fully developed trail now. So there's a whole bunch of like 15 year updates on the trails here to do and people can see the loops and they'll want to walk. So I would be delighted to come on a walkabout and have a look at some of these. But I have lots of ideas here too. It's great that you're doing this and I'll shut up now. Um, ben has a comment? Yeah, just uh, just like a, from an optics perspective, the like black public access road is a little confusing. I think that maybe including that in the legend at the top or making it clear that it's a it's a trail essentially it would be helpful. Right now it, it doesn't compute even though there is that indicator on the map for me. Yeah, I agree. Okay. It needs to say pedestrian access and maybe also a road underneath. Mm -hmm. It's like that that's the first use in terms of this map anyways. Okay. Or you could have a pe pedestrian access along road. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that would work. Okay. Um, and then we have the headwaters map. And sorry, this is a little bit smaller, but just because of the, the shape of it. Um, I was going to say, I, I don't know if we'll take off the um, lower viewpoint down here. You can see my mouse, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And then um, we need to actually do some work to clear this one up a little bit too. This trail is, is getting a bit overgrown. I think maybe people aren't going out there too much or maybe our summer students didn't realize that there was this extra viewpoint up here, but it still is an absolutely beautiful view. So that's great. Um, yeah. Uh, one question I have, do you think we should add the benches to the maps? Is that enough of a destination? Yeah. Sue Ellen says yes. Any I other have, thoughts? I have a few yeah. um, ideas, but <clears throat> um, the, 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 this one, we, we always wanted to call it the Maggie Cumming Pine Tree Trail. Back in the day, Maggie did a ton of work around here pruning when we were first creating the trails. And um, one of the features is the uh, white pine, which you don't see anywhere else in public land on, on Bowen. It's got white pines and jack pines. So I don't know, um, you can see one of them is called Pine Tree Trail and um, and that's perfect. And if we, uh, uh, if you wanted to add anything to this, I just suggest uh, featuring either the pines or uh, the fact that it's the headwaters and the trail and the streams run both ways from it, right? And, um, uh, but if you wanted to tell a bit more of a story with the map. Otherwise, I like the idea of putting the benches on and, uh, and yes, taking out that lower, uh, viewpoints all grown in now. We used to create little pocket views, like little little windows, um, uh, but that bench has even been uh, moved out. It's all grown in differently now. And um, uh, fair enough. I, I think even when I started in 2016, I remember going down to that bench and saying, why is there a bench here? <laughs> it's just it used to be beautiful in a tall view. forest, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, to a wetland, but that's the other thing is the, is the forest succession has been happening. I'll stop now. Um, Carla, are, is it possible to zoom in? I can't read what um, the items are that are um, marked on the map. Yeah, I just got to get out of um, presenter mode. Oh, that's good. Yeah. So maybe um, have somewhere it's that, like, say, bog lookout um, at that spot um, on the like raised boardwalk. Yeah. So instead of viewpoint, maybe say bog lookout. Or do you mean, sorry, do you mean, um, the one up here. Um, 
So this is because this is the boardwalk here. Yeah, yeah, I think, yeah, that's the one I mean. Yeah, okay. So but to indicate the viewpoints. Uh, Yeah, like a viewpoint also people will, a lot of people will think of it like they're gonna see out to the ocean or, you know, they're gonna be up high and look out. Um, and some of them are more yeah. about, you know, looking close. So having them differentiated that way, you know, with a name. Yeah. Would be nice. And the bench could be just a symbol on the map. It wouldn't have to be written right. out, yeah. Um, it could and be then, like bog, oh, sorry, Claudia. No, go ahead. Could be maybe like bog viewing area or something uh -huh. like that. It's, it's Sue Ellen here. Um, yeah, if you call it uh, wetland viewing area or pine, we, we, we should go up there because it's different now than it was 10 years ago. And um, uh, it is an interior view. Um, but it's more, uh, it's not the bog. It's not, you don't, you're not seeing the, the, the low rolling sphagnum area, which is up at the top there. Um, uh, I wanted to just flag, um, one of the features of Headwaters Park is that it's level. So I really like the idea of putting the, uh, marking the benches because that, this is one of the level loop trails that seniors can do. And um, people recovering from accidents or moms with strollers, you know, anybody where you don't want hills. Um, so putting, marking the benches uh, is a good way to increase the accessibility. There's a lot of people that don't know about this. And now there's the permanent pit toilet on the other side uh, in just in Quarry Park. So it's a, it's a year round, um, that's just an added bit. Sorry, I could go on and on. Rob? Is that is that enough for now? And maybe uh, we'll we'll try and do a walkabout soon. And it, like, what's the timeline? And is that possibility to get out there and then hash out the ideas we have on site? Uh, yeah, I definitely think that that would be worthwhile and helpful. And um, I mean, I think we really want to have like a a grand reopening kind of thing this spring, but. Um, I think it's more important that we do a really good job with these and make sure to get everybody's input. Sorry, Rob had a, his hand up. Yeah, one uh, maybe um, closing comment was, is, is there any benefit in putting um, distances uh, on the trails for people that aren't familiar with how far those loops are? Mm -hmm. I always like that, um, when I'm, especially when I'm not um when i'm a tourist um i kind of like them in times personally that works too it ju it's just a thought yeah, yeah it, there's pros and cons of course so mm -hmm. sue ellen um one other part of this is uh nowadays most people look for this kind of thing online and uh if before they go so it might be something to have on the website but you might not want to use your sign real estate for it. Having said that, um, because I th think this one isn't at the parking lot, right? It's set in a little bit is where you're thinking about putting it. We're at the same location. Yes. Yeah, same location. I think we're going to actually keep the kiosks that we have. Um, they're, they're in pretty good shape. One of them fell over a couple years ago. So we were kind of worried about them, but really like they're these, these giant timbers, right? And they're just like, they're fine. I think it's not worth replacing. So I think what we're going to do is just get them kind of cleaned up and then we'll um, put new footings on them and maybe like an extra support on the sides, which we have done that sign. Because one of the things I was wondering was whether you would be pulling this one out towards the road so people could see it where they park at Quarry Park, they could see that there was another one there. When we originally, uh, like a long time ago, we, we weren't sure who owned that sign that was there and all that kind of thing had to be negotiated. Um, <clears throat> but now from the road, all it says is headwaters. And then you get all the way in there and you see that there's the loop. I think it might be more inviting for people and, uh, helpful for people especially if they're coming to quarry park to see oh there's another one right across so my suggestion would be especially if it fell over is to move it out 
close to the road where people can see it and and uh, so they can choose which one should we go to today mm-hmm. and um, so that that's my uh, uh, suggestion there I really like Rob your your idea is a good one and um, but that kind of thing can also be on online if there's not room for it on the sign because I often think people have already decided uh, having said that it's on the big kiosk right down there in Crippen across from the Catholic Church uh, it does have the distances but I've never seen anybody look at it and I walk there several times a day so um, so I like that suggestion Sam, but I do know that um, we do not own that sign um, that the Headwaters Park sign is um, oh I know I know but and- but can we bring this out this one yeah I'm I'm just not sure there's the space there is is what I'm getting at but um let's look maybe when we do a (laughs) walk yeah it could be like right there at the where the where yeah um people can see it Mm -hmm. it might it, it might work Okay, let, let's move on then. Um, as, uh, you got some other slides for us, Carla? Um, I don't really. The, the last slide was just um, uh, just asking the question, where do we want to put the interpretive signs? And do you want to go on a walkabout? Okay, great. Um, so maybe a doodle poll is necessary to mm-hmm. see where most people can make it? Okay, that would be good. All right, thank you. I'm just going to go back to my agenda here. Thanks for all the feedback. This this is great. Thanks for all your work on this. It's looking great. Why can't I? Oh, there that that one. I think we need a walkabout because otherwise, then we could get input from everybody else (laughs) too. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so we are on now 5.2, which is Cape Roger Curtis Safety and Environmental Awareness. And Ben, you were going to speak to this issue. Yeah, I don't know that there's a whole lot to say. I saw that in, during the last meeting, I wasn't there, um, but you spoke about this and sort of went over the concerns that were brought to us Um and it didn't really sound like we came up with a concrete plan about about anything to approach. Uh, I forget what the name. What was the name of the woman from the Cape? Um, anyway, yeah, it just doesn't sound like there was a lot that we were in the position to do. Uh, I was sort of interested to hear Nicola's suggestion about there being camping on Bowen Island. It's always been a mystery to me as to why there's not some kind of municipally regulated camping. So just as a personal <laughs> note you know one day wouldn't it be great if there was a safe place for teenagers on Bowen Island to go and camp uh but that's just a a soapbox that I'll step off of now so yeah I don't I mean unless anyone has any further points on on what uh what we can do to stop people camping on private property on the Cape I don't think we need to talk about it anymore sorry can someone uh anyone have any comments (laughs) I just have to give my cat food. She's clawing at me. <laughs> I can you... chime in briefly if okay. you'd like. Yeah, uh, go just, ahead. I'll be, I'll just be to ready. say from the um, official community plan and the, the camping on the island uh, issue is uh, uh, it comes up uh, all the time. Part of the uh, reason um, that there aren't any uh, legal campsites on Bowen um, currently uh, is because uh, the idea of um, people pulling trailers onto the ferry and RVs and things like that uh, in the summer. I mean, the traffic just even on um, Monday (laughs) was really bad. So that's always been somebody's people's uh, concerns. And then parties, we used to have huge influxes of people coming for bush parties and, uh, and um, fire. So there's, there's a whole bunch of issues around it. I believe um, 
that walk in or bicycle in campsites might be something at some point, but otherwise when there's uh, been a, like the scouts want to go camping or something, they find somebody with the land and work out an arrangement with them on private land. So I'll just stop there for now. Uh, Bonnie, sorry. I just wanted to say that um, at Apodaca Provincial Park, there is there is camping, mm. but um, technically that is boat access only. Mm. But their camping is allowed there. And camping is allowed on our Crown lands um, mm. as well. <laughs> Jeremy? Um, I, I noticed that Salt Spring on the South Shore has camping. I've been through those areas. It seems pretty benign. I, I'd be interesting maybe to explore what their methods are to keep, I mean, that's a very dry area. It's a sort of shoulder of the sea um, exposed um, to the sun and the wind. So it's dry. And yet they seem to have successfully managed to incorporate camping. And I'm, I'm with Ben. I, I've always wondered about um, Bowen, when I was younger, certainly if I'd have come here, that would have been my preferred method of visiting would be to camp. Um, if I wanted to spend more than just a day hoofing around. Um, so there's a probably a fairly sizable population of people who could benignly use it. And evidently they do on Salt Spring. Field trip. <laughs> I'll just I'll just say um, <clears throat> um, on uh, Hornby uh, there is a new part of uh, a provincial park that where they're going to have a provincial park campground, uh, but part of the part of the um, uh, there's also uh, a big campground that is turning into or I'm the chair of the local trust committee there so I don't want to say too much. Um, but there's enforcement action there because it's turning into uh, some people are using it as a sort of um, uh, summer residences, uh, like uh, um, living there. And um, so I just, you know, there's a bunch of issues with it that get into enforcement. And then there's the whole, all of Metro Vancouver, if they knew that it was camping permitted or invited, uh, how would that be managed? Because um, the, the, anyway, through the official community planning um, process, I was chair of that last time and it's always been a uh, fraught, many different <clears throat> ideas, but the uh, risks and the ability to manage crown land is not ours, you know? So it's been um, uh, a careful um, step-by-step. I think if you were a private landowner, you could, um, uh, apply to have a private campsite if it was walk-in or bicycle in and maybe with the new trails and stuff uh, that will be something that people will be interested in but I'm going on and um, Claudia is back and I'm going to stop now. Okay anyone else with any last thoughts? Um, so as far as the Cape Roger Curtis um, we did talk about uh, the possibility of signs, but some of the streets are not municipal streets and um, we didn't also want to um, overload the area with signage. So Bonnie, was there anything that you thought we could follow up with? Um, I, you know, my recommendation, um, I, you know, I did, I did hear what the committee was saying last time about possibly a sign of, you know, where the washroom is, where, where the, you know, the beach access points are, et cetera. But um, I think it feels like it's a little bit in flux because CRC, the conservancy lands yet to be named um, are, you know, they're not sure they might have a uh, facility there, a toilet there, you know, just the trails there. So my recommendation is I think that maybe tabling the idea of a sign, a sign that outlines, you know, where you can go in the CRC lands, maybe for next year, um, just then I think that would make more sense because we would hate to make a sign and, you know, we don't have the CRC correct, the Conservancy mm -hmm. lands yet. So, yeah, and I'm not sure they would want to be on the sign. I mean, uh, yeah, or maybe they would, or maybe they wouldn't. And so I think that maybe just a little bit more revealed, it's a little bit 
in a flex with okay. respect to that lens. So okay. if the committee's okay with that and just knowing what we have on our work plan um, mm -hmm. this year, I know it's just a sign, but just a sign is a lot of hours of staff time. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, so that would be my recommendation that we remember this. I'll make a note to self and um, bring it up again next year. And plus we'll have a year of data this summer back out of the pandemic and sort of we'd be able to monitor the issues as well. Okay. Great. Rob? Yeah, um, question I guess for Bonnie related to this is, are you able to summarize sort of enforcement or is this the right place to talk about that um, as it relates to, you know, bylaw infractions around camping and that kind of thing or even trespassing on private lands? Yeah, so um, I can sort of, I mean, I can give you kind of a, a guesstimate estimate of the complaints that we've received. So we, of course, we react to complaints or we respond to complaints. Um, I haven't had any for a while. Um, Sasha, of course, does watch out for private lands and will report um, you know, mainly to the RCMP, she'll report like people trespassing because it really is um, a trespass issue. It's not a bylaw issue per se, um, when people go on to private lands in the Cape and have fires or dump garbage. Um, of course, it's very rarely are the people caught in the act, um, but it's, um, it's not, it's more, um, it, it's the RCMP. As far as um, uh, land use uh, bylaw or municipal bylaws are concerned, we really have not received many complaints about the seaside walk um, or parking issues um, in the last few years. What we have, I would say in the last couple of years, maybe we've had a, two or three complaints about dogs, dog incidences. We have those all over the island, but I really have not received many complaints um, related to fires on public lands um, out at CRC or other issues. Okay, thanks, that's great to know. Yeah. Okay, thanks everyone. Uh, let's move to six updates. Um, Jeremy is going to update us on what the Art Renison Nature Park subcommittee uh, discussed at their meeting. Jeremy? Yeah, thanks, Claudia. Um, thanks to Carla. She's kept, uh, she was the uh, secretary of that meeting and, and um, noted uh, a bunch of points. We, we touched on quite a few, uh, I wouldn't say there was resolution to any of these, but they were thrown out there as initial points of discussion. Um, there were, for example, just to quickly breeze through them, um, the issue of uh, dog walking, uh, disruption of wildlife, uh, whether they should be on lead, uh, dog feces. Um, uh, of course, above all of our discussion or beneath all of our discussion was the realization that there are, are, is an existing precedent for a bunch of things, horse, horses and dogs and et cetera. Uh, that was kind of left unresolved, but recognized as something that is an important and ultimately will no doubt be an influential in a lot of these uh, points. Um, the general idea was that uh, dog wash, walking on lead was uh, preferable. Um, interesting thing, <laughs> I had sent to Bonnie uh, an article just within two days of our subcommittee meeting, meeting. I happened to run in as I read the science news every day, there was an article on dogs in nature preserves <laughs> and their impacts, which I won't get into because it's that that's maybe something for the uh, subcommittee. Um, and uh, other issues were dogs swimming um, in, in the lake and of course people swimming. The general feeling in that regard, again, though not quite resolved, it was a point of discussion, was that uh, given that there are likely pathogens like uh, Giardia and um, Cryptosporidium in the water anyway, 
Um, it's not likely that dogs or humans are apt to add much more to it. it uh, and again, I, sent, I forwarded to Bonnie an article that I run into about humans swimming and the effects of uh, sunscreen in freshwater environments, uh, which can be onerous. Uh, but again, that's something maybe our subcommittee should discuss to some point of resolution. Um, there's some discussion as well about uh, agricultural runoff, although I, I think the uh, the agricultural work on the south side of the road is largely organic that can still have ramifications uh, <clears throat> needs to be explored. Um, there was a discussion about uh, bicycle or motorized use of the trail around the lake um, and e-bikes. E <clears throat> generally an aversion to motorized uh, transport or bikes uh, with the possible exception of e-bikes, but that again is uh, a debatable point. Um, horses, that was another one. Uh, <clears throat> and about, I guess the main concern with horses is uh, horse droppings <clears throat> on the trail and the tendency that they're not generally picked up by the riders, unlike uh, do dogs. Um, doings. Um, and then there was a very broad sense of we really need to define what a nature reserve is, because in a lot of ways, in some definitions, nature reserves are a lot more um, <clears throat> restrictive than uh, the Renaissance lands are shaping up to be on the, on the strength of their historical precedent. Um, and we need to get a handle on um, what do we mean by a nature reserve in that in that particular case. Is there anything I've missed for those of you who are also in that committee? Claudia, did, did I miss much? No, that, that sounded like a good summary. Um, Again, I should stress that these things are were uh, we're kind of the initial pass that need to be that need to be discussed further and pared down, parsed into something that's applicable. Maybe some sort of resolution on what's applicable and appropriate. And um, just to remind everyone, if uh, uh, if it wasn't clear, but we're not the only um, committee that has a subcommittee to discuss this, uh, the Climate Change and Environment um, Committee is also um, giving input. Is that right, Bonnie? Yes, that's yeah. correct, Claudia. Okay, so, um, so basically we're just um, giving input to Bonnie on, um, you know, where we're coming from as the Parks, Trails and Greenways Advisory Committee and um, what, um, what we think is uh, appropriate uh, use um, of the nature reserve and its trails. Yeah, thanks, Claudia. And thanks so much, Jeremy, for your, your summary. That was really good. Uh, Steph just had a question about, will there be a public consultation? So sort of what I envision the process looking at is getting um, some recommendations some um, from both the Parks and Trails subcommittee and also the Environment and Climate Action subcommittee and consolidating though that feedback and those, those suggestions and putting together a report for council with some uh, potential recommendations. Maybe the first recommendation would be for public consultation um, around these XYZ um, issues and just get some feedback. I think maybe council would want to hear that. Um, some people just think, well, there won't be any swimming. Like it's just already, you know, you hear a lot of diverse opinions about everything. So I think council to make a, a decision and come up with a management plan, which might be a policy, might be um, sort of a bylaw type. Um, there might be sort of a bylaw, bylaw provisions around it. Like who knows, right? Uh, um, maybe a, a parks um, bylaw specifically for um, Grafton Lake per se, you know, I don't know where we're going to go with that, but so yeah, so that there is a process, um, you know, 
it definitely goes beyond the staff level, I feel, because there is this historical use and attachment to certain activities within that, that area. Mm -hmm. So that's sort of where I see, you know, this year going to council to get some direction on, you know, public consultation, you know, what get sort of ideas, maybe it's a committee of the whole, um, looking at some ideas for, you know, where council feels that maybe we should go, like some, maybe there will be a consensus amongst council, like, no, we don't want swimming, or yes, we want dogs on leash. And, and just um, the issue, just to, to show you that, you know, it's on the surface, it's, well, just, you know, yeah, we just, we just won't allow swimming, or we'll just have dogs on leash. But, but every decision has sort of fallout for staff, potentially for dogs on leash, Dogs on Bowen are not are allowed to be off leash, um, except for in the cove, because we have a dog control bylaw. So if we change one area, well, let's say we say uh, Grafton Lake has to be on leash, then we have to amend the dog bylaw as well. So there are there are so council needs to understand the staff implications, um, bylaw implications as well. So so yeah, hope that answered the question, staff. That was a good one, Sue Allen. I think that I'm, I'm not going to disagree. I think that all sounds, of course, uh, really practical. And then there's the other side of it, which is um, when you have uh, public engagement, you give people a chance to, A, get to know the park a little bit, and uh, B, get involved in the uh, planning and the, the, the sort of stewardship thinking about it. And it lets people build a connection with your new park before, uh, you know, that kind of... Um, input into things uh, makes creates a tie and yeah. a feeling of, um, of stewardship. Thank you. Yeah, for sure, Suelen. And just one other point, and I, I'm sorry I haven't been able to talk to the subcommittee meetings or uh, members about this, but um, since our meeting of subcommittee, um, I've heard from a, a couple of different sources that, you know, the term reserve isn't a, a very good term these days with mm -hmm. reconciliation and such. So, so also to reserve does uh, evoke different frames of reference for different people. So keeping with our park plan, we have a, a classification of nature park, which allows trails and benches and viewpoints and things like that. So, you know, um, that would be the recommendation. So I talked to Daniel about it and, um, uh, the developer of the Grafton Lake Lands has talked to the family to ask them if they'd be open that it's called the Art Renison Nature Park as opposed to the art and and they are totally open to that so you know I think that's in keeping with our discussion that it really isn't a reserve people go there it's a people are going to be interacting you know whether we do look at maybe a couple of exclusion zones in in the future where there might be some nesting wildlife or you know some some um, biodiverse areas that we want to exclude um, people and dogs and things like we could we could discuss that further but I like the idea of it the art renaissance nature park it fits with our parks plan Oops. Yeah. Um, I just want to add one thing um, to uh, Jeremy's summary that I thought of was uh, uh, you know there's there's different kinds of trails uh, around the lake and there's the cross island trail which of course would allow um, multiple uses including e-bikes and so on but um, so there there might be a distinction of you know interior trails um, that aren't along the on Grafton Road would be more restrictive than than that trail so and, and Claudia can I just clarify so because the cross island trail has a different connotation so the multi-use path we're talking about right. on the on right. Grafton because mm -hmm. the cross island trail it does go through um, private land and that's right. a different trail yeah. Yeah. the multi-use trail thank yeah. you multi-use path the muck path okay all right um if that's everything on that topic then um, we should move on we're going to skip 6.2 and go to 6.3 dunstall bay beach and alder cove beach access update from bonnie sure and i'll i'll keep it um short but uh we have retained um services of a a professional uh, geomorphologist and um, uh, coastal 
expert and just looking at some ways to remediate um, the damage that's been done at Tunstall. I don't know if everybody's had a chance to go down there, but it really, really did uh, take a lot of um, impact or it has a lot of impact from the storms, um, just the recent storms. So we're looking at some way to, you know, uh, allow for continued safe access for folks, um, you know, take, take into consideration coastal processes and really, you know, keep, uh, restore, um, do some restoration there that will, will last given that the dynamic nature of that area. And um, yeah, just all the, all the stuff that I don't understand all the science behind it, but we do have people that do. So, um, but there's a beautiful cedar tree, for example, on the, on the hillside. And, you know, without some sort of restorative um, works there, and even with perhaps over time, but without that cedar tree is, is going to go. Um, and it's a, a big old tree that does provide some shade and all sorts of things for, uh, for that beach. So, so we wanna make sure the beach remains healthy and nourished and um, access is maintained and, you know, the, yeah, that, that we don't do something and inadvertently cause uh, more erosion on different areas of, of the beach. So we're in preliminary stages in the meantime, just to allow um, continued access. There's the riprap that was put there before without a lot of maybe uh, good science behind it. It was just kind of a react, reactive sort of mechanism. Um, we know more and we can do better today. Um, but anyway, that riprap that is now dispersed, like thrown Lego blocks over the beach, um, is going to be sort of just brought to the end of the trail so people can at least get down to the beach fairly safely for the meantime. Um, but we are going to start the process of looking at a design and then some restorative works. And I think that will hold the beach in, in you know, in a, a good way uh, for the future, um, protect what we have. Um, and Alder Cove, uh, that I don't know if anyone ever went down there after the storms as well, but that was just um, undercut dramatically, the stairs at the bottom of the, the, the public access. So uh, we are doing a temporary measure. It's a big project because there's, there's erosion going on on the hillside. There's that built infrastructure that's to replace, it'd be very expensive. But um, we have found a way to just sort of fix the bottom part because that's the immediate concern um, because it was basically the stairs weren't attached to anything. It was just completely undercut uh, by the ocean. So we are going to fix that bottom part, make it safe so people at least can go down. For the me, it's just a temporary uh, fix that um, we do have to think about in the next um, year or so what we're going to do as a, it's a bigger project. It's a big project. So yeah, so that's an update about those two beach access. Okay, thank you, Bonnie. Any questions for Bonnie? Okay, then um, let's have a staff update from Bonnie. Oh my goodness. Sorry. <laughs> I heard myself uh, talking. Um, I just wanted, I just wrote down a few just items I'd like to, to bring up just in case people didn't know. Um, we did do a Bowen a dive under the dock down at Bowen Island Marina a few weeks ago, and there's another dive scheduled with the divers for cleaner lakes and oceans and some IPS kids um, down at the Union Steamship Company Marina. And we're just organizing that, and that's going to happen at the end of March. Um, I'll update the committee on, on the date of that, but that's just going to be fantastic. It's going to be a big, big dive. We've got lots of divers, way more than we're at the last dive. And um, yeah, so I think that would be a really, really worthwhile event. Um, the, other, the other thing was um, Onion Island. So there... Uh, was a, a couple, there were a couple of uh, concerned citizens that came forward to the Environment Committee about the black oyster catchers and the plight of them trying to nest on Onion Island. Um, so some recommendations came out of um, 
the meeting with ECAC um, about some signage to start. Um, they are potentially disturbed. They nest on the ground, of course, on the island and um, no young have been seen, although pairs have been seen trying to breed. Um, and um, so we're just gonna put some signage up as a first step, I know more signs, but um, for awareness. Um, yeah, once the signs are created, we'll, we'll bring them forward to this committee to have a look at them as well. Um, but, but yeah, it's just um, out of concern because, you know, it's just, uh, there's others, there's turnstone, um, uh, there's, yeah, there's uh, other species there as well, but the, the oyster catchers are the ones that are tried to breed and um, no viable, you know, no young have, have been seen um, fledged, fledging there. Um, so, yeah, so that's just something that's come up and that, that was a, a good, a good uh, awareness um, brought forward by a couple of people that live and can look out at, know the know it so well. They, they know the bird species there very, very well. Um, I think that's about it. I think we've touched upon the other um, items. Yeah, that's, that's it. Okay, thank you, Bonnie. And um, Sue Ellen is going to bring us um, a brief update on the Council and Islands Trust. Yeah, thank you. And um, I just uh, will mention that I saw Bonnie yesterday uh, down at the mural. So if anybody hasn't seen the gateway mural uh, on the lock block wall as you come off the ferry, take a look and you'll see uh, nature all over it. And it was a great coming together of people and people involved in it. And thanks Bonnie for your part in that too. Um, fabulous. And uh, I just, um, um, and the few days before that, it was the uh, blessing ceremony. Well, the uh, Squamish nation came to uh, uh, get it going in a good way. Um, uh, and, uh, uh, they sprinkled the, uh, the special water and the sand and the oh. volcanic soil and the, uh, with the cedar branches on the mural and just to get it off to a really good start and to add some uh, good uh, community connectivity to the whole idea of uh, paddling forward to, together. And um, uh, February 28th uh, is a uh, committee of the whole before the council meeting. That's gonna be about uh, the site alteration bylaw potentially, and uh, whether uh, council will uh, direct staff to um, create some rules around, uh, if you own a big chunk of land, can you, um, uh, can uh, blasting and vegetation removal and, you know, how uh, would you need permission to do that before um, you, you start or could you just do that and come to council after you've changed the drainage and the slopes and everything and removed all the vegetation as happens now. So that's coming up and um, uh, lots of other things happening on the uh, council agendas all the time. Uh, and um, um, Islands Trust, I'll just mention that um, meetings coming up in a couple of weeks in Nanaimo. Uh, 26 uh, trustees from all of the islands trust area from the other islands come together. And uh, one of the things we'll be looking at is um, another round of public input uh, for our trust policy statement, which are the um, uh, main policies that guide development and, and uh, that our official community plan has to fit within it. And any changes to zoning and things have to fit within it. So there are... Uh, uh, in the draft that's out there for consultation, there are things like uh, uh, no more new docks uh, and uh, no desalinization plants because they can create the brine, uh, heavy brine that goes down and, and um, can damage the life in the sea, different things like that. Those are some of the more controversial ones. A lot of the, it's about preserving and protecting. And, uh, and what uh, changes do we need to make to that to adapt to climate change, uh, reconciliation, and the need for affordable housing in the islands. And uh, not just Bowen, but all the other islands, most of the other islands too. So uh, those are just a few little things I thought I would just mention. And if people have questions, 
bring them on or uh, contact me anytime. So. Any questions at this time for Sue Ellen? Okay. No, okay, thank you, Sue Ellen. Um, that brings us to seven, new business. Is there any other uh, business matters to bring up? Anyone have anything? No, okay. Can I, can I, can I ask about, um, uh, maybe we can give Steph a little idea about when might be a good time for people to do a walkabout? Sometimes Sunday mornings works for people or sometimes people really prefer not Sundays. I don't, I, maybe we could do, do a, should it be during the week? Friday afternoons used to work better because then staff could get away from their desk and come with us. Uh, whereas otherwise they have to, more juggling. Um, but I don't know, maybe with people working from home would Friday afternoons work? Uh, does anybody have any preferences? <laughs> Sunday morning? Would people prefer Sunday morning or Friday afternoon? How many people for Friday afternoon? Like three. Oh. Uh, generally, yes, but um, not this Friday. But. Oh, okay. Well, it could be a couple of Fridays or how many people? Would, it, would a Thursday afternoon work also? Just because I don't usually work on Friday. That's a very good I can work, I can make it work. It's fine, but I'm just might have a four year old with me. <laughs> I'm working in town on Wednesdays and Thursdays now. So other days are better for me personally. How many people would come if we scheduled it for a Sunday morning? That's what I thought. How many people would come if we scheduled it for a uh, Saturday afternoon? No. So Friday afternoon's looking pretty good here. Uh, Sunday afternoon? No, it's all family time, right? Okay. Why don't um, I send out, I'll send out the doodle poll, Swan, and why don't I try for um, maybe even like a, you know, I'll try next Monday, Tuesday, and Friday, say, or something. We'll see if any of those dates work. And then sure. check your schedule. That sounds great. I just thought since we had everybody together for a few minutes, we could get a sense. Yeah, yeah. okay. Sure. Thank you. And this is a walkabout uh, for the um, Headwaters Park or Quarry Park? Both. Okay. Okay. And um, Steph has nicely uh, attached some information items to the agenda for us. Um, and that brings us to our next meeting. Um, do we want to look at dates? Do April 5th. Okay. April 5th, I think so. So yeah, because of March break and everything, it gets pushed mm -hmm. back. Yeah. So April 5th seemed to work for everyone at this point. Yeah, sounding good. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Um, can I have someone move to adjourn? Nicola and seconded by? Phil, all in favor. Thank you so much for coming tonight and um, your input. It's very helpful. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Thanks. Good night. Good night. Thank you.